Out of My Mind by Sharon M. Draper. Chapter 24. It's time. Camera's rolling, someone calls out. In five, four, three, two. He points at the man at center stage. The moderator, a slim guy with hair that looks like it has been glued into place, brushes a speck off of his tuxedo, adjusts his red striped tie, and begins speaking right on cue. Good evening, he says, with that perfectly modulated voice that announces, announcers seem to be born with. My name is Charles Kingsley, and I'd like to welcome you to the WizKids Southwest Ohio Regional Competition. Cheers all around. In two weeks, the winner of this competition will travel to Washington, D.C. to represent our area at the National Championships. More cheers. We wish the best of luck to all of our young comp competitors. The studio quiets. The rules are simple, Mr. Kingsley explains. Teams will be asked 25 questions. Each correct answer from each four-member team is worth one point. So the maximum total score today is 100 points. He pauses so the cameras can show the scoreboard. Then he announces, the two teams with the highest scores from all the preliminary rounds will meet for what we call a quiz-off. So point totals are critical. The winner of that final set of quiz questions will be declared our local elementary school level champion and will proceed to the nationals in Washington. The team that emerges as the winner will appear live on national television on Good Morning America the next morning. Cheers and applause. Our first two teams to compete tonight will be Woodland Elementary School and Spalding Street Elementary School. Take your places, ladies and gentlemen. The four contestants from Woodland and the other three members of our team walk to the testing area, waving for the cameras. Catherine rolls me into my position, makes sure that I can easily reach the buttons, and then she gives me a quick hug and walks away. I'd like to take a moment, Mr. Kingley says, to introduce a very special participant in our competition tonight. Her name is Melody Brooks. The cameras all point in my direction. The studio lights are incredibly bright and hot. I blink rapidly. I feel damp and sweaty. Although the other contestants will stand, Melody will be seated as she answers the questions. We've made adjustments to our answer board so that she can access the buttons, but nothing else. I hear she's a fierce competitor. I try to wave, but I figure I look goofy and wobbly, so I put down my hand. Rose stands next to me, with Connor in the middle and Claire on the far end. I feel like I'm going to throw up, I hear Claire whisper. Don't you dare, Connor hisses. We'll start with a practice round so you can familiarize yourself with our button system. Everybody ready? Which of the following is a mammal? A cat, B bird, C turtle, D spider. Everybody, including me, pushes A, of course. The screen in front of us lights up with the letter A. Don't you wish all questions would be that easy, Mr. Kingley asks, chuckling. Yeah, right. Remember two things, he reminds everyone. First, this is a team competition. And second, this is not a test of speed, but of accuracy. Teams get more points if all four contestants come up with the correct answer. And the two teams with the most points meet in for the finals. Are we ready? Ready! The seven contestants on stage answer. I start to hit the word ready on my board, but I decide to concentrate on the contest instead. Round one will have 25 questions. Let us begin. Number one, I tense. Here we go. The average lifespan of an adult mayfly can range from A, one minute to one hour, B, 30 minutes to one day, one day to one week, or two weeks to one month. Bing, 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 bing. Everyone hits their buttons. Once the answers are locked in, the readouts are displayed. Everyone on, it answered, everyone on our team answered B. One person on the Woodland team answered A. Mr. Kingley smiled and said, Woodland has three points. Spalding now has four with all correct answers. We can do this. I can do this. Bring on the next one. Number two, he intones. The Battle of Lexington and Concord and the American Revolutionary War were fought in what year? A, 1774. B, 1775. C, 1776. And D, 1777. That one is a little tricky. I press B, however. So does everyone else. The score is now 7 to 8. Mr. King Kingsley continues. In literature, the word oxymoron means which of the following? 
a combination of contradictory words, B, the outcome of a sequence of events, C, an implied reference to a literary or historical event, D, a symbolic story or narrative. I'm fairly sure the answer is A, but that word could mean big-headed crippled kid who thinks that she can win a national competition. When the answer is shown on the screen, Connor got it wrong, and so did two members of the Woodland team. So the score is now set at Woodland 9, Spalding 11. We're still up, but we have 22 more questions to go. The next question, Mr. Kingsley says, deals with math. Oh, crap. I'm dead meat. There are 2,357 paintings in an art museum. The museum has 124 rooms, which is the reasonable estimate for the number of paintings in each room. A10, B20, C60, or D200. Yep, dead. Rotten meat. Let's see. I've got to visualize a museum and rooms and lovely paintings. How many in a room? Not sure. Divide into what? Not sure. I'm going to say 60. When the answer flashes as B, I feel like an idiot. But Rose got it wrong, too. And so did two kids on the Woodland team. The score stands at 13 to 11. By the time we get to the 25th question, I'm sweaty and thirsty, but I'm pumped. The lead bounced back and forth between the two teams a couple of times. Sometimes they were in front of us. Sometimes we forged ahead with points. I got most of the language arts questions right, but the math questions stumped me. Connor can't spell, so he missed several of those questions. Rose is weak in history. Claire has trouble with science. The Woodland team was about the same. Some kids good in some areas, others good in others. Now we come to find the fi final question for our first two teams, Mr. Kingsley announced. He clears his throat and begins. A weather event me that measured 6.5 on the Richter scale would be an A tornado, B hurricane, C earthquake, or D tsunami. Bing, bing, bing. I punch C and relax. I did not have a tornado spaz. Connor, Rose, and Claire all got the final question correct. Two people on the Woodland team answered Hurricane instead. When the results are tallied, our team has a total of 81 points. Woodland ends up with 77. Congratulations, Spalding, Mr. Kingsley says with a polished smile. The two highest scoring teams will meet for the final round later tonight. Good luck, and we hope to see you again. Victory for round one. As the show breaks for a commercial, we are all escorted to a special waiting room in the back. The students from Woodland look really disappointed. That's it for them for the whole competition. All they can do now is watch as the second two teams head to the stage for their session under the lights. Mom, Dad, Penny, Mrs. V, and Catherine are all waiting for me in the back room, hugging me and kissing me like I'd won the lottery or something. Catherine does a little happy dance. Dad tells me he filmed the whole thing on his camcorder. You rocked, Melody, Mrs. V shouts. I am so proud of you, sweetie, my mom says. Can I have a Coke? I type as I quickly as I can. I feel breathless. Everybody laughs as Catherine rushes to find me a paper cup for the sodas that are sitting on, on ice in the waiting room for the contestants. Mom pours dribbles of the iced Coke into my mouth, one sip at a time, making sure I don't spill on my shirt. I am so thirsty. I don't even care that people from the other teams are staring at me. Mr. Dimming, after talking to Rose and Connor and Claire, bounds over to us, beaming. This is such a thrill, Melody. You are amazing out there. I'm so proud of our team and extremely proud of you. Thanks, I tap. What's next? We wait for the next teams to compete. Then we'll meet and beat the other high-scoring team and pack our bags for Washington. Don't pack yet, I type with a grin on my face. I've been packed for years. He tells me, I've just been waiting for the right team. This is our year. I just know it. He wanders off to talk to other parents. I never thought about what teachers dream about. I had no idea what a big deal this is for him. Rose comes over and squats down next to Penny. I like your hat, she tells Penny, who is doodling, holding doodle closely and wearing a blue polka dotted hat with a red feather. Woozy, Penny says gleefully. How's my favorite baby girl, Rose says in her whispery voice. Woozy, Penny repeats. You did really good, Melody, Rose says to me. You too, I type. You think we have a chance for the finals? Yep. And Washington? Yep. And being on Good Morning America? Oh, yeah. Claire stays on the other side of the room with her parents, but Connor ambles over and stands next to Rose. 
You're okay, Melody, he says. You beat me on a couple of those. You rockin' math, I tell him. I know, he replies with a grin, but I still can't spell. I hope they don't have any spelling questions in the finals. I've got to go to the bathroom, Rose says suddenly. I am so nervous about the finals. She hurries out. I know what she means. Butterflies, moths, giant bumblebees flutter inside me. When we were on camera, it felt like a million years to compete our round. But in just a few minutes, the second set of contestants came back to the waiting room. The school with the little crowns won round two with 79 points. Then, within another half an hour, Edison Elementary clinches the third round with a score of 80. Finally, a school called Perry Valley wins the fourth round with 82 points, just one more point than us. I watched them, Mrs. V tells me, when they troop back into the room, excited and victorious. They're really good. Should we worry, I ask? Of course not. Our team is the best because they have a secret weapon, you. Suddenly, there is a rush of activity in the room as stagehands come in to get us. Perry Valley and Spalding Street, we need you back on camera for the finals. You are our top two scoring schools. Congratulations. We hurry back to our places. The lights seem brighter this time. Mr. Kingsley returns to his position, gets his microphone adjusted by the stage crew, and shouts, Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the final round of our regional Wiz Kids competition. The winners of this round will represent us all in the Washington, D.C. In just two weeks, all members of the winning team, along with their chaperones, will receive an all-expense-paid trip to our nation's capital, three nights in a hotel, and tours of the city. Trophy! Trophy! Someone yells. Oh, and the famous Wids Kids Champion Award! The winning team in Washington gets to take home that huge golden trophy, and they receive a guest appearance on Good Morning America, and their school will receive a check for $2,000 to be used for academic endeavors. Lots of whoops at that. Let us begin. Teams, are you ready? Ready! They all reply, I am ready too.